It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck out. I'm Kevin Smith. It's Friday night. <laughs> just oh a little reminder. You're right, you're right. It is Friday night. I was just about ready to phone the show in. <laughs> yes, you caught you me. Were. Now I have to change days. It's Friday night in yes. Hollywood. So let's babble the fuck out. I'm Kevin Smith. It's Friday, Friday. <laughs> Love when it's Friday, so I get to do that. You get to do it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell them your name. I'm Ralph Garman. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hollywood Babylon. <laughs> We're Thank back you. on track. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. Big, uh, big, big news. First things first. We're doing our first East Coast Babylon coming Oh, up, okay. So I I was like, talk what? What that. happened? I'm pregnant. <laughs> oh, my God. And it's yours. I was like, how weird. I look like I'm the pregnant No, one. I'm just excited because we're going to Philadelphia. We just, uh, we just closed that deal. So. That's right. We are on October 17th. Hollywood Babylon does its first East Coast gig. Nobody in this room gives a shit. But no, but people listen, who are listening, listening on Monday. Listening elsewhere, yeah. They'll well, be like, oh, my God, we're going to Philly. We're yes. at the World Cafe Live, I believe it is. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure when tickets go on sale. They may be on sale. As soon as Monday, but uh, that's a cool thing because it's in Philly, which is Ralph's hometown. Yes, I'm very excited. Yes, so he could do it in front of his people, return like Christ to Jerusalem, riding an ass. (laughs) And they'll nail me to a cross, too, I'm sure, when it's all over. (laughs) Nail me to the Liberty Bell. (laughs) Thanks so much for coming out tonight. As always, we'd like to start the show with uh, shout-outs. People come particularly long distances or celebrate special occasions by coming to the show. We like to reward them with a little shout out, and I believe there is a uh, song that goes along with that. It's a shout out with Kevin and Ralph, so get your cock out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your cock out. Stop that. <laughs> that song just brings out the best in me. Or the worst. No, when I say the best, I mean the gay. It just makes me <laughs> miss being gay. Why is your cock always limp when it comes out? What? Because, I don't know. I think it would be... My cock. You come out, out like that, yeah. I think it would be dirty if I'm like, get your cock out, it's an erection. You know, but a erection limp cock is, is fine, that's yeah, fine. a limp cock is not threatening. It's like, look at that, you know? But it's erection, soft, it can't hurt oh, anybody. An erection screams like, run, bitch. Right. Uh, yeah, it's threatening. A limp cock is friendly. It's like, ah. <laughs> And then you add in the cigar smell at the end. Yeah, that's not good for anybody. <laughs> I've been asking my wife to do that for years. I was like, work my cock like a cigar. Sniff it, and like this. Like... But oh, she won't do or it. Or a cigarillo, in your case. Right? <laughs> <laughs> work that like a fucking like a, like a uh, blunt. roach. <laughs> <laughs> I was handed this shout-out just before we came out on stage. Uh, Ross Rogers. Ross, are you in the house tonight? Where are you? Wait. Make some noise, Ross. It's a podcast, for fuck's sake. Hey, man. Don't just raise your hand. There's I heard his hand. We're not raised. taking a vote. This isn't a quorum. <laughs> Make some noise. Ross turns 18 years old today, and he came to celebrate his birthday. Hey, with man! Us. Happy birthday! <laughs> who so uh, get him a shot of whiskey on me? He's 18, for fuck's sake. Who, That's legal, uh, right here. Who, who, who did you attend with? Jennifer. <laughs> Woo! Well, that tells the story there, yeah. doesn't it? We're going to need some Jennifer? context, Ross. Is, is Jennifer your lady? No. <laughs> Jennifer came to life. Fuck no! <laughs> I'm his babysitter. You? No! What is the Jennifer relation? She's, She's your, your aunt. aunt. Right on, man. Well, what? we're going to talk about butt fucking all night. <laughs> so that should be very awkward for you, Ross. Happy birthday. <laughs> If you don't understand, ask your aunt. She'll explain the whole thing. <laughs> How dare you, sir? She I'm looks like saying... a very virginal young woman. Uh, I'm not saying she's done it, but she knows about it. <laughs> we all know about it. Welcome, welcome. 18, isn't this like a fucking 21 and over? No, this is 18. This is 18. Is it really? Yeah. You can't drink here, but you can, you can laugh here. <laughs> Why would you laugh without the booze? <laughs> I know. 
Certainly no reason on stage. <laughs> well, welcome, man. Welcome, young man. Today you are a man. Why yes. is this day different than all other days? All right, You're... Rabbi, thank you. <laughs> By the end of the night, he'll be a man, that's for sure. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. And Jennifer, learn. you'll be a woman, too. <laughs> it's all going to happen tonight. It's going to be magical. <laughs> Are uh, Brian and Nicola here from, uh, from the UK, from England? Brian and Nicola, right up front. Wait. He goes, Are Brian and Nicola here? No answer. From the UK. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. You think there's another fucking Nicola in this room anywhere? <laughs> Oh, he must mean us. That's yeah. what he said from the UK. It's probably us then, Nicola. Raise your hand. I thought they were talking about the American Brian Nicola. <laughs> but no, it's us. This email comes from uh, your homeland, from your uh, friend Gav. Do you know Gav? He wrote us and he said, I would love to request a shout out for my good friends, Brian and Nicola. They have traveled all the way from far north of England to complete the compulsory Brit review of the former colonies. <laughs> We have to check if you guys are looking after yourselves. Well, thank you for <laughs> checking They're in doing on a little us. look in. All right, yeah. man. Anyway, Brian is my best friend and the one I owe an eternal gratitude for for introducing me to HBO. However, Brian and I work together as part of a t very tiny team, and he has shown no remorse whatsoever for dropping us in the shit by disappearing for nearly three weeks to the other side of the pond. Well, you're a fucking miserable co-worker, sir. <laughs> Leaving the rest of us to really struggle and to dream of revenge. So you're in for it when you get home. That's all I got to tell you. Well, Gav uh, wanted to welcome you here, so welcome to both of you. And on, yes, welcome from all the way from fucking some other place. Where in here. the north are you from? Newcastle. Newcastle? Oh. That's where John Constantine was from. Hellblazer, bitch. You read that comic book? <laughs> no? Oh my God, he's like the hero of your fucking hometown. He's like the only good thing that came out of Newcastle. <laughs> In the comics, that's what it's they so said. It's so funny. You went right to comic books. I thought Newcastle Brown Ale. That's where my mind went. You went to beer. Yeah. You went to comics. I went to booze. Oh, how weird. <laughs> I know. He what are smoked the uh, Silk Cut cigarettes. They sell those there? Silk Cuts and a brand or something? Yeah, they sell them all over the UK. Everything I know about life, I know from movies and comic books. Yes. <laughs> Welcome from Newcastle. Well, Nicola. <laughs> That's only funny if you ever heard that commercial over yeah. here. It's a very popular commercial here. And even here if you heard the, the commercial here, it's really not that funny. That yeah. was, as you can tell, a pity laugh. Even the 18 year old kid was like, I came to this. He's <laughs> <laughs> making cough drop jokes? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Halfway through the show, he's going to ask his aunt, Why don't you get me laid? <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm a man. You heard the fat guy? Joel and Erica? Are Joel and Erica here? That's, yes, uh, that's some yes. noise. Motherfucking noise, Joel. It's my boy. Uh, Joel says, I sent you an email to let you know my beautiful girlfriend Erica and I would be coming to the show. I mentioned we were going to my mom and she asked if she could come with us. Is mom there too? Hi, mom. I met these cats in the elevator before, man. On the way up, seriously, we were in the elevator together. Did you smoke out together? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I was hanging out with his mom. I was like, you want to get high, lady? <laughs> and surprisingly, she was like, fuck yes. <laughs> I was like, you're going to need it. This show's not good. Mom... Uh, Mom but she, said she would people. love to come with us because laughter is the best medicine, she Fuckin says. Wow, she is a awesome. breast cancer survivor. Whoa! <laughs> I hope this doesn't count as treatment because uh, we, I don't know how much we can give you tonight. Like 10 cc's of laughter. It's about all we can manage. Hmm. Um, she's a very laid-back person, so she'll be okay with the cock jokes, Joel writes. Right on, man. Right on. Because we, we got, got aunts, we got mothers. I'm very nervous all of a sudden. Yeah, it's a real family affair tonight. Yeah. Please um, give welcome, my, man. Welcome. Please give my two favorite women on the planet a shout-out in the voice of your choice. Well, we just did in our own voices, Joel, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, don't make us clown it up, Yeah, man. really. Uh, Robert and Elizabeth, are you guys here? Oh, everybody's right up front. Jesus. They're at the same table. How ironic. I just found out my kick-ass girlfriend, Elizabeth, bought us tickets for tomorrow night's show. I guess you wrote this yesterday, I'm guessing. <laughs> well <It's> done, <laughs> fucking Jessica Fletcher, man. That was straight out of Cabot <laughs> Cove. I'm you like Jethro Bodine. I'm doing some ciphering. <laughs> oh, my God. You're like both the hardy <laughs> one boys. guy who watches Beverly Hillbillies laughing over here. <laughs> yeah. I know that joke. <laughs> Wasn't the 18-year-old kid, that's for sure. Oh, no, he has no idea. <laughs> Uh, it took her for a while to give it a listen regarding HBO, but now she listens all the time. Well, I'm glad that you've corrupted her. Thank you, sir. I've been listening to you guys since the beginning. Kevin, I just want to say thank you for your movies, good and bad. 
I don't bad. I don't remember those. I don't. I am also a writer and director, and was pretty bummed about your retirement from the director chair. Well, that's not for a while. Yeah. I don't believe it. I don't believe it, by the way. Oh, it's going to happen. He'll Watch. be back. Watch the next 10 years. They're going to be interesting. I was bummed, too, because he's the only director who will give me work in movies. <laughs> so when he stops making movies, I stop acting in movies. I'm more bummed than you are, sir. Congratulations on one year of babbling. Cheers to 10 more. Yeah, like we'll last 10 years. That'll happen. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. I agree. I think we'll last. This show will last 1,000 years. <laughs> Or the Fourth Reich? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Um, no, I think we'll last 10 years. That's easy. You're high. Well, I mean, yes, besides... but that's not the point. Uh, you don't think, what, what do you think? Like year four, four, we start fighting or something? I probably won't live 10 years more. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, with, good point. With my liver? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. You might just work with my liver. My liver will be up here on stage with you. That'd be amazing. Could it still do impressions? <laughs> sure. We can put do like a kidney, you can do a heart, a lung. We'd put those googly eyes on top of it. <laughs> like a Geico commercial. <laughs> yes. You put a mic next to it and shit, and you're like, ooh-ah. <laughs> Is that what you distill me down to? Just the ooh-ah, <laughs> huh, really? <laughs> but I could do that. Like, I pretend you're obviously dead. It's just your liver with googly eyes on it. And, and I'm doing the, the impression. So I always turn you just for fucking the ones I could do. It's which a is ventriloquist act. Yes. All of a sudden. <laughs> Uh, how about Derek? Is Derek here tonight? Derek? Oh. <laughs> when, I read, when I read Derek's email, you'll understand the somber tone in his voice. Confirmation. I, I'm going to buy Derek a drink. I'm going to start off the email by saying that out loud. Here's Derek's email. After being unemployed for over a year, Ooh. my soon-to-be ex-wife told Ooh. me she wanted a divorce. Oh. So I did what any self-respecting man would do. I packed up all my belongings into my car and got the fuck out of there. Yeah, man. Well done. Yeah, brother. Make a move. Make a change, man. Now I finally have a job and the freedom that comes from knowing I'm no longer married to crazy. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm sure I'll stick my dick in crazy again, but marriage, <laughs> no, sir. From two guys who are still stuck in crazy, we salute you. <laughs> That's right. Got over the wall. Oh Congratulations. You beat the guard dogs and the, and the searchlights. <laughs> I'll be at the show by myself because my friends would rather spend $80 to see Rancid. I told them if they wanted to hear someone talk full retard, you're usually more than happy to oblige. <laughs> what I'm saying is the singer for Rancid sounds retarded. Yes, I think we get that, Derek. Thank you. <laughs> Anyway, listening to your show, I started from number one, I've heard them all. It made me laugh during some pretty fucking dark times. Thanks for the laughs. Look forward to seeing you live, Derek. Well, Derek, thanks for coming. Give it up tonight. for Derek, man. As I mentioned, there's a drink coming to you from me, and I, I'm assuming you are drinking, right? You are drinking. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. At first, he was afraid. He was petrified. <laughs> Thinking that he'd never live without crazy by his side. Well done, dude. Way to fucking get out and claim your life back and shit. Now go find new crazy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Emails from around the world, James. Ain't no drag. Garvin's got an email back. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reactions. Our first email is from Missoula, Montana. Missoula, Montana. Yeah. Twin Peaks, bitch. You're going back to Missoula, Montana. <laughs> you don't remember that? I don't remember that. No. Is that There's Fire Walk moment. With Me or is that no, the series? No, it's from the show. It was when her father, who was Leland Palmer. Right. And spoilers, if you've never seen if you've never seen Twin Peaks. Oh, get it. Get it. It's yeah. fucking like get 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 it, get weed and watch it all the way through. Yeah. Because I watched it straight. I was like, what, fucking 18, I think, when it was on the air or something yeah. like that? I should rewatch it with weed now. That'd be amazing. <laughs> but anyway, it's a worth watching, wonderful series, particularly season one. But in any event, uh, spoiler, spoilers, her dad uh, is possessed by a fucking killer spirit, and he was the one that fucking killed the girl, and then he winds up killing her cousin. Right. And when he kills her, that's what he said. He's like, you're going back to Missoula, Montana! And he <laughs> smashed her head into, like, a fireplace or something like that. Yeah. It was really creepy. So he lied. She really wasn't going back to Missoula, Montana. <laughs> she was going into the fireplace is where Pretty she was much. going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but he was a murderer and a liar, and that I cannot abide. Yeah, I'll enough. take murderer, but True. I don't like lying murderers. Yeah, double bad, no yeah. good. Uh, Zebediah is his name. <laughs> of course it is. He's from Missoula, Montana. 
Ralph and Kevin, I love the show and would literally give my left nut to see you guys live. Wow. Zebediah, if you come out, I will pay your way out here if you bring your left nut in a jar to come see our show. I see, I was just like, just show me your left nut. <laughs> no, I want it. I'm putting it on the mantle. <laughs> I came in late listening to the show, being stuck in Missoula, Montana. Yeah, I think they just got the internet. That's why he's late. To... I have not had an opportunity to see you guys live. Uh, live. Ralph, I know this is a stretch, but I want to see if you have the skills to pay the bills in the impersonation department. Okay, challenge? A challenge. Really? Can you pull off Ed Wynn as Vincent Vega and David Lynch as Jules Winfield from Tarantino's Pulp Fiction? The Royale with cheese car scene. It's pretty special, man. It is, but I took the liberty of printing out that scene. He's I make facing. no guarantees. Save your applause. He's facing the challenge, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's Ralph Garman is not going to do one impression. Front row, pull up the plastic tarp. Because <laughs> Ralph's going to do two impressions I'm not in one Gallagher. Scene. I'm not going to hit a melon up here. <laughs> I was going to bring a melon up and smash it between each impression. No, right, here we just because you spit a lot. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Nah, man. They got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. What do they call it? They call it a royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? A Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it La Big Mac. La Big Mac. What do they call a Whopper? I don't know. I didn't go into Burger King. And there you go. scene. Whoa. Take that, Zebediah. That is Reward your real name. unlocked. <laughs> well done, man. <laughs> That's impressive. You did fucking two. Two, no, two, two in one. This uh, next email comes from Canada, eh? Todsky and Tito, they've got their own podcast up there called the YMM Podcast up mm -hmm. in Canada. They said, uh, we've seen Red State twice now, once in LA during the US tour and again in Edmonton with the, ac the Academy qualifying run complete. We want to try to give this movie the credit it deserves, so they've created the Facebook page, Red State for Oscar. And I think we've got a picture of it up here. This is the actual uh, Red State for Oscar Facebook page. So go there and friend that because they're trying to get as much attention for Red State as possible. They said, we feel that there are at least three Academy Award categories that Red State deserves a nod for. Best Actor, Michael Parks. Yes. Best Supporting Actor, John Goodman. Yes. Best Original Screenplay, Kevin Smith. No, I pull myself... No. No, I pull, I pull myself out of it, man. I'm trying to get the actors' nods and whatnot. Yeah, I don't... It's, uh, that's what's important to they've me. They've got three categories here. It's just... Uh, there's. No other actors mentioned on this list, I'm just... Oscar hasn't added the silent category. If they did, I'd have fucking swept, have it, swept it for it. years. Yeah, I know. But, uh, I, yeah, I think, I th you know, some people go, this fucking Kevin Smith Oscar. No, it's not me, it's that movie, and it's particularly those performances. Yeah. And I think there's a really good chance that we could get Michael Parks or Goodman or Melissa Leo. Uh, Carrie Bechet. Uh, Carrie Bechet nods. Yeah. I mean, the performances of the movie are pretty... Pretty damn stellar. And all you got to do is convince the acting branch of the Academy. That's who votes on the actors. So uh, I, I think that's easy. Once an actor sees those performances, they recognize quality. That's right. all I hear from actors who've seen it. Like, oh, my God, man, I could just watch the actors act. So there's a good chance, I th particularly Parks. He's mesmerizing. If you haven't seen the movie yet, it's on VOD right now. You can literally watch it in your house. Um, and it's going to be on screens. Can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, September 25th, we're going back to theaters. Um, and we, yeah, it's the, right here in town, we're going to host the screening at uh, the New Beverly, at uh, the Quentin Theater down on, uh, on Beverly. <laughs> and that's where uh, we'll show the flick. Then after the flick, we're doing a Q&A. And then after the Q&A, you and I are going to do a little mini Babylon. Right. But that's happening in that theater in Los Angeles, but then it's going to be streamed from that theater to, I think it's like 50 other theaters across the country. So what, they're, what you guys would be seeing at the New Bev, they'd be seeing 
there. And we're going to try this out. And if this works, uh, it's kind of cool. Like it, the theaters aren't like big multiplex theaters. Some are in big cities. Some are like off the beaten path. So it's in people's neighborhoods and stuff like that. But if this works on the 25th, then we could do Red State like once a month with a different cast member, like show the movie, stream the movie, and then stream the Q&A with like, uh, this time it's John Goodman. Next time it's Melissa Leo. Next time it's Ralph Garman. But what I like about that too, uh, other than like taking Red State out repeatedly, that means we could take this fucking show and stream it into movie theaters as well. Yeah. And that's kind of neat. Like you could literally go watch Hollywood Babylon in a theater that's not out here in Los Angeles. So I, I don't know. This is a cool, exciting thing for me. Anyway, September 25th, if you want to check it out in theaters with the Q&A and whatnot. Here in town, it'll be at the New Beverly and everywhere else. It'll just be uh, at theaters. You go to coopersdell.com, you can find a list of the theaters. Anyway. I hope they have booze in these theaters you're showing it at. Yeah, well... For the Babylon part, at least, you know. Afterwards? Yeah. No, it's going to be dry. And, oh, and we're fuck. And, and we're following that movie, which is fucked up. It's <laughs> yeah, like, that's a nice opening act. Yeah, yeah. Murder it's... and death and horribleness. <laughs> and now, here's Hollywood Babylon. <laughs> this email comes from Faith... Faith says, my name is Faith. She starts her email. I believe it. And I'm 14 years old. You should not be listening to this show, Faith. Yeah, really? That's the first problem. Her second line is, I want to say Red State was great. You should not be watching Red State, Faith. Where are your parents, Faith? Where are they? <laughs> Secondly, I listen to your podcast nonstop, and it really makes my days better. You're 14. How much trouble could you have? <laughs> So I decided to paint you two. I hope you like them. And she sent along pictures of uh, portraits of us that she painted. She's 14 years old. <laughs> and that's us. That's her work. That's us. I, uh, she's got me. My liver is gone. I'm jaundiced already. My eyes are yellow. <laughs> and Kevin has his mouth open waiting for something to be stuck in it. And uh, I think she has really captured the true, <laughs> true essence of who we are. Faith, that is so... <laughs> Bad. Those drawings are terrible. <laughs> She's <No>. 14! <laughs> I'm kidding. They're great. I was yes, touched. That's what I'm touched. saying. Touched. I almost rolled a tear. All right. This next email begins, Ralph and Kevin, member of the Canadian Garmy here. My husband and I are huge fans of the show. I turned him on to Smodcast soon after uh, it first started, right around uh, 2007 when we got married. Coming up on our anniversary in a few weeks, I'd like to show him how much I truly love him. I don't want to get too mushy, but money is tight right now for those of us in social work, and I'm trying to come up with creative ways to show my man how incredible he is. So here's my request. Please wish him a happy anniversary and tell him he lays the best pipe around. <laughs> Could you ask for anything more than a wife, than a public announcement that you're a great lay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially using the word pipe. Yeah. You don't get that in many women, you know. No. They'd be like, his penis is suitable. That's what, that's what lays, my wife lays says Lays great me. pipe. Yeah, 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 that's hot right yeah. there. I got a little hard when you read that. <laughs> It'd be even more incredible if it could be done as the McDonald's fry girl. <laughs> He spends his days with high-needs autism brain injury kids, and sometimes he just needs a good laugh to deal with the stress and the beatings. Is he beating the children, or? This letter went wrong, man. Your imitation always cracks him up. Well, that's disturbing on so many levels. You're the best pipe player I've ever met. <laughs> I love it when you lay pipe. <laughs> when we're in the back by the dumpster and I'm taking out the old buns from the corner pounders. Thanks for the pipe laying. <laughs> You're going straight to fucking hell, dude. I that didn't comes wanna... from the guy that made dogma. You're going to hell first. <laughs> I didn't want to mention our names until the end. I thought I'd surprise him. Must appreciate it, Liz, and my incredible coxman of a husband, Tyler. So Right on, Tyler. Tyler and Liz. That's what I'm talking about. This is from Harry K. in Virginia Beach. Big fan of the show. Listen to all your podcasts. So I made a short song for you guys from last week. It's my remix of the Al Pacino Margarita Dance. I don't remember the Margarita Dance, but apparently they're... I think Al Pacino said, give someone a margarita, I think, maybe last week. And so uh, Harry has taken upon himself to turn it into a dance mix. Okay. James? Come on now. Come on, my 
margaritas. Come on now, more margaritas. Don't, don't ruin it. We ran out of music, man. That was sexy. No, I'm glad we ran out of music. It was just at the right time. Thank you, James. I was just about to get my cock in. Yeah, I know. That was awesome. One more time, man. One more time. Can we cue that up again? Come on now. More margaritas. Come on now. More margaritas. Just wait. South Beach, Miami this summer. Come on now. More margaritas. The songs will be going off. All the kids I are going to be dancing to that. I remember you saying more margaritas. Well, I think, um, I think someone was in the shout-outs early last week, and we bought her a margarita. And, and then we found like, out there was margaritas. a pregnant woman in the audience, and I bought her a margarita, too. <laughs> and uh, I, think, I think I did it as Pacino, and I think that's where that came from. Fucking yeah, so. love it. Love it. And lastly, this is from Sue Wilson, Ralph and Kev. My young daughter told me a good Batman joke the other day, and I thought, if you hadn't heard it, you might enjoy it. I hadn't heard this. Maybe you haven't either, but here it is. This kid was walking down the street and found a magic lamp. He rubbed the lamp, and of course, a genie came out. He granted the boy three wishes. For his first wish, the boy wished he could be like Batman, so the genie killed his parents. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole joke. I had not heard that, and I thought it was great. Yeah. That's the best part about being Batman, I guess. That is fucking simplicity at its finest, man. I like that. You know, it's been a couple of weeks now. We haven't had any good deaths. I'm kind of bummed out. Oh, there's been no... Uh, no Tinseltown steps. Thank God, man. No, it sucks. No, because when those things happen, they happen in threes, and then we always get nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it usually happens to celebrities, so I think we're safe. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Famous people, credibility. But I'm afraid that like, the tension's building up, the pressure's building up, and someone good's going to go. Because usually we have like minor celebrities, and I think it's like a crockpot. It lets the steam out, you know? I'm about to fly to England for a week <laughs> tomorrow. Shut up. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, but we do have a Hollywood helper this week. This is a celebrity who goes out of his way to do something nice for someone who's not another celebrity, which is rare. Yeah. The little segment we call the Hollywood Helper. Hollywood helpers, when you need a helping hand. Thanks, mister. Thanks, mister. We need a new jingle, man. Uh, you said sexy. that last week. What's wrong with that? Do it's a remix, nice. Like, it's uh, sweet. Uh, uh, uh. No, that's sweet. Uh, uh, it's nice. Yes, bitch. Hollywood helper. Uh, uh, Here it is. Uh, uh, Hollywood uh, helper. Uh, come on now. More no, margaritas. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me give him a track to lay into it. Everyone shut up. Ready? Mix this in, margarita man. Hollywood helper. Hollywood helper. There you go. He can send it back Next to us. Next week, he's going to send it yeah, back to us. And he can jump it into the margarita mix, so it goes, Hollywood help him. More this... margaritas! <laughs> <laughs> but this is a sweet segment about nice things happening for nice people, and that's a very sweet song. Not everything has to be, get your cock out of here. <laughs> boop, Not everything has to be filth and disgustingness, okay? Well, Sometimes song, we can do something nice. This song sounds like, the Hollywood Helper song now sounds like a Catholic mass. Like... <laughs> It's not celebratory. Nobody wants to be there, man. But more margaritas, you just want to. You're like, let's honor him with more margaritas. <laughs> this week's Hollywood helper is Josh Duhamel, the guy from uh, the Transformer movies, I guess, right? Is it Duhamel? 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 How do you du say it? Anybody know? Do them all. Josh does them all. <laughs> anyway, that guy Josh from yeah, those yeah. movies. He was in uh, Las Vegas, too, I guess, the TV series. That's where he... he Mr. Mr. Fergie, Fergie. That's, how, that's what we'll call him, yes. He is married to Fergie, the Black Eyed Peas. He helped out his hometown of Minot, North Dakota this week. They have been ravaged by... Uh, a Kraken? <laughs> no, by floods. Oh. That were forced uh, upon them from summer storms that just uh, flooded that area of the country and bad things happened. Sounds like a Kraken. No, it's not the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> So they've been, uh, they've been in a, in having some hard times there in Minot, and that's his hometown. So he hosted a concert there, mm -hmm. and I don't know how he landed her, but he got Fergie and the Black Eyed Peas <laughs> to perform. As if that town hasn't suffered enough. <laughs> now the Black Eyed Peas are in their town. Anyway, they threw a concert, and it raised a million dollars, and all of the proceeds are going to benefit the flood victims there in Minot, North Dakota. So Right on, man. Well done. So well done. Boop, 
<laughs> more margaritas. Yeah. That's what they were yeah, singing yeah, there yeah. in Minot. Yeah. Now, in that one, you do like, my humps, my humps, my humps, more margaritas. <laughs> you do a mix. You're a frustrated it. DJ, aren't you, sir? I ended I like James's job up there. Uh, every week, we try to take a look at some movies that have got mistakes in them. <laughs> it's been a... Uh, I gotta be honest with you. I watched... This is so fuck. I like this segment before we get into it. I watched Scarface tonight. They released it on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Whole movie I'm watching, looking for, sh for <laughs> shit that should, should, not, that should be. not be. Everything now. I'm seeing crane shots where like people wait to move, and I'm like, that ain't good enough. Yeah. But I'm looking for stuff now, because I love this segment. It's so bizarre. Just to recap so far, we took a look at the kid who pointed to his penis in uh, Back to the Future 3. A little kid pointed at his dick, and going like this to the camera, and yeah, pointed at his dick. Uh, Return of the Jedi, uh, Harrison Ford grabbed Carrie Fisher's boob. Yes. The Harry Potter map, the Rodgers map, there were people fucking on the map. We saw yes. that. Uh, someone, either in indiscriminate man or woman, had something drop out of their pants in Teen Wolf. We know that much. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Belloc ate a fly. Uh, Last Samurai, Tom Cruise's horse kicked somebody in the balls. In the Wildcats, a, a, a black running back turned into Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Planet of the Apes, a ape sort of half-heartedly threw a foam rock at Charlton Heston, didn't really commit. Uh, Ghostbusters has Ron Jeremy in it as an extra. You can see him in that movie. All right, easy. And last week's was Anaconda, where we saw a waterfall go upside, go the backwards. Point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The point. This week, this is the most requested one we've ever received, and I've kind of held off from doing it because everyone knows it. But I thought last week we were talking about how George Lucas was raping our collective childhoods. And now he was making changes to the Star Wars movies, and this is a mistake from the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope, I guess it's called now. Mm -hmm. um, and it was an actual mistake, but it, was, it became so famous that Lucas actually went in, back in, and put a sound effect onto the mistake to make it appear as if it was meant to be in the film. Okay. Uh, we've had a ton of requests for this, hundreds, and so tonight we're going to take a look at it. This is the stormtrooper smashing his head in Star Wars. So we're going we're gonna to show you. Let me get my uh, laser pointer out here. This is very helpful when we do this segment. We're going to hey, show it a couple hey, Ralph, times. Should we do the theme? Oh, I'm sorry. Shit, this yeah. should not be. Of course, James. Sorry. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. Talk about your Catholic masses. That's yeah, I know. literally. Yeah, yeah, that's that awesome. A too like a mass. All right, here it is, uh, the Star Wars Stormtrooper scene where the Stormtrooper hits his head on the doorway as he comes through. We'll play it a couple times for you. You want to check out the Stormtrooper on the right. I don't even uh, know why I'm looking. I've seen this movie so many times. Right hand side. Here we go. This guy right here. Hey, hey. Yeah. He used to have a sound effect, and Lucas put one in because he can't help himself. There we go. A little taller than the rest of the Stormtroopers. One more time for good measure. Watch this guy right there. Bam. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Joel from Kansas City and everyone else who suggested that. That's shit that should not be for this week. So right thank on, you so man. much. New releases, movies and theaters as of today. Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star, is in theaters. I'm not going to see this fucking movie. Why? Because of the fucking TV commercials. Why? Who is that douchebag yelling at me in the TV commercials? Bucky Larson! Go see it! I hypnotized you! Bucky Lot! Who the fuck is that guy? I don't know. I Have you seen, seen the TV no. commercials? It oh. sounds like Gilbert Godfrey, he's, though. He's worse. He's more annoying than Gilbert Godfrey. Really? It's like Gilbert Godfrey and Adam Carolla had a child. <laughs> <laughs> this guy came out. <laughs> stars uh, Nick Swartzen, Stephen Dorff, Christina Ricci. It's about a guy whose parents are porn stars, and he decides that he's going to be a porn star, but he's a nerd with a small cock. So you can see why that's funny. And that's out right now. Out right now. Right on. You could walk down the city walk right now and go see it, I bet that's you. That's okay. All right. <laughs> Warrior opens today as well. This is the MMA movie. And it's got Tom Hardy in it. Tom he Hardy. Plays Bane. Matalo, Matalo, Bane, Bane, Matalo, Matalo. Yeah. Uh, Joel Edgerton. Matalo, Matalo, Bane, Bane. Plays his brother, who's also an MMA fighter, and by the end of the film, they're forced to fight each other for the championship. Could oh, two brothers who have yeah. to fight. Right Could on. Happen. And they fight. MMA is the mixed martial arts. That's right. That's uh, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, kicking, and boxing. biting and shit like yeah. that. <laughs> no biting, I don't no believe. Biting. No. Nick Nolte plays their father, who's a former uh, MMA coach, but he's also an alcoholic. It's a lot of stuff to, to handle here. As I'll teach you how to fight, kid, but I want to drink first. <laughs> 
says a lot of those lines. Dude, I we think. ain't brothers, we ain't partners, and we ain't friends. Listen, convict, we're not partners, we're not friends, okay? I, I don't know what we're doing here. That's pretty good, man. Mm, thank you, thank you, sir. Tell me a story, Jack. Fuck you. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> favorite line in that. And Steven Soderbergh has a new movie coming out today called Contagion. That's out today? Yes. I want to see this. This trailer looks dope. Yeah, this is Steven Soderbergh's uh, version of a disaster movie where a virus sweeps the world, basically, and, uh, and kills Gwyneth Paltrow, which is all we can really ask for, right? <laughs> I think we'd all be willing to sacrifice a few loved ones if Gwyneth goes first. <laughs> Marion Cotillard is also in this film. Matt Again? Marion Cotillard is also in this film. How many L's you wrap up in there, man? Cotillard. Cotillard. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne, don't call me Larry. And Jude Law <laughs> also in the film. He doesn't like it when you call him Larry. He don't like it anymore? No, he He's doesn't like that. Larry. He doesn't like Larry. And Jude Law. That looks pretty good. I love, you know, I'm a big fan of Outbreak. I love disease movies. They don't make enough of them for my... <laughs> Did you ever see that movie Outbreak? Yeah, we gave me the willies. It's I don't like disease awesome. movies because you can't fight a disease. You can't see it. It's microscopic and That's it fucks scary, you up. That's scary, man. If you can see it, you can kill it. If you can't see it, it's in your butt. <laughs> or up your nose. You know, it's just all over you. Like, these commercials are bad. Like, the posters are like, don't talk to anyone. Don't touch nothing. Yeah. You know? Like my mother growing up. Just <laughs> <laughs> touch Mom. Your that would be your movie. <laughs> Contagion. At least the outbreak, you could blame it on monkey. I don't know where this one comes from. I, I think it's bird flu. If I, I saw a piece of the trailer. Oh, really? They, I read, they said something about bird flu. Fucking bird. Because they go, so he goes, so there's a line in the trailer where the guy goes, can this be weaponized? And Larry, Lawrence, Fishburne. Yeah, don't call him Larry. He says, uh, the birds have already weaponized it. Oh. So maybe it's like that bird movie, too, man, where they fight the birds. You ever see that picture? What's the, it called? The birds? No. <laughs> No, there was a recent one, man. Like where a kid made it on a shoestring budget and everybody <laughs> oh, yeah, I know with the hangers about. and yeah, shit yeah. like that. <laughs> right. uh, the birds? Is that uh, I forget what it's called. I can't remember it either. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. birds. Yes. <laughs> the only thing angry about that game is they still give you that stupid red bird that does it's, nothing. It's a good bird. Stop bird, picking on the red bird. That bird is shit. It, it doesn't carry its, it's own nice. weight. It's the Kevin Smith of birds that in that not game. not fair. Everything else does something cool. One guy zips through wood. One guy blows shit up. They're all specialists, except for the fucking red guy, man. It's dumb. <laughs> HBO headlines this week. The rumors were true. It was announced this week Eddie Murphy will host the 84th Annual Academy Awards. Now that's a fire. Uh, that's good, man. I think he, he'll be funny. Really? Fucking hey, come on. Is, is, this, is the show taking place in 1985? Oh. No, I, I don't know, man. I think funny's funny at the end of the day. I think uh, I, I look Is he going to wear a fat suit? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Oh, it's the last time he was funny. If he did that, that would be amazing. He might do that, man. I, I look forward to it. I, think, I mean, come on, dude. Anything's better than fucking last year. It was terrifying. Yeah, that was pretty rough. That was a fucking train wreck. I felt so bad, I wanted to go down and try to push him out of the way and try to do a better job, you know? They were just really kind of lost, but he'll be he'll be funny. No coincidence. Brett Ratner is uh, producing the show, and he and Ben Stiller and Eddie Murphy have a movie coming out called Tower Heist in November. So it's a little self-serving to have Eddie there, but in Hollywood, I don't believe that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Isn't that? Uh, also, this week, Mel Gibson. While we're talking about movies, he's announced he's going to make a movie about the Jews. <laughs> it no, always it's works true. out he's gonna, well. He's going to make it up. He's gonna, this is a makeup to all the Jews. I thought you meant he was going to make it up. No, like, he's not going to make up the story. <laughs> and the Jews fought the Kraken. <laughs> this is a true story about the Jews. Well, as true as the Bible can give you, I guess. Right. But uh, it's about Judah Maccabee. Ooh, the hammer. No, it's not the hammer. That's what Maccabee means the hammer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't check your Old Testament, bitch. <laughs> Judah Maccabee he's, was the hammer, he's man. He's not a wrestler. He's not an <laughs> MMA fighter. That was his name. He, he was the hammer. They, everyone looked up to him and shit because he fought back and shit. But he did. Was... He fought back. He fought back against the king. He retook Jerusalem for the yeah. Jews. And he was the guy who stretched one night worth of oil into eight nights worth of oil, which gave us uh, Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And gave... The hammer. That, stop calling him the hammer. I'm telling you, that's his nickname. Um, Judah the Hammer Maccabee. Mel Gibson said he's going to direct and possibly star. 
as Judah. Now, here's the thing about Mel. He doesn't have the greatest track record with the Jews. He, some said he had an anti-Semitic take in The Passion of the Christ. Yeah. He sure blamed the Jews for all the world wars when he was drunk and pulled over in Malibu. Yes. Um, but this is his chance to, to make good. He's having Joe Esterhaus write the screenplay. That's the man who gave us a Basic Instinct and Flashdance and Jagged Edge. And I think Showgirls, too. I think he has Showgirls. Yeah. Yeah. Why, well, really? That's an interesting choice to write it. The Jews are upset. Is that the title of the movie? No, no. They've just been uh, telling anyone who will listen they're not happy with it. I think because Joe Esterhaus is writing it, I think. Oh. Uh, no, it's, uh, they don't like the fact that Mel Gibson is, uh, is going to be directing it. One rabbi told the Hollywood Reporter, I, I, I shit you not, he said, it's like having a white supremacist play Martin Luther King Jr. I, I believe that. I, I buy that. So they're not, uh, they're not excited about the take on it. But yeah. uh, look. People said Passion of the Christ. No one would go. And look, look at the, the money did that made. Did he finance? Is he going to finance the movie himself? I wonder. I, like I think it's going to be uh, him and Warner Brothers are talking about going in halvesies. Right on. Halvesies. <laughs> That's a Hollywood term, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, look, if you're, gonna, if you're doing a makeup, fine. Make the movie. But don't cast yourself in that role. That's No. Yeah. Get like Gilbert Gottfried to play uh, the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have some oil. But it's only one day. So... Maybe eight. I don't know. I'm not a good measurer. Say Aflac. Aflac. <laughs> Jim Carrey is batshit crazy. According to this story. Uh, we talked a couple weeks ago. He was uh, seducing Emma Stone via YouTube. Yes. Now he's pissing off his neighbors in the uh, Tony West village of uh, New York City. He was seen the other day spray painting graffiti on the side of his own home, on the wall there. I think we've got a picture of him actually doing it. This is someone took of him. It's him spray painting on his own wall. Send, uh, no one knows what the design means or it's what. It's Boing. What? Boing. It's Boing? When he is on Twitter, he does this thing, Boing. He writes Boing. People used to write it back and forth to him. It looks like a visual representation of Boing. Huh. That'd be my guess. And no one knows what the FFC stands for either. That he, uh, fuck he Father Christmas. <laughs> no, I don't believe that's it. Freaking fucking Carrie, I'm thinking, is what yeah, it is. Yeah, maybe. But, but wait, uh, he his tagged house? his own house. Tagged his own house, yeah. And why are they mad? The neighbors think it might make the neighborhood <laughs> look not so nice when people start spray painting graffiti on their own homes. So a lot of people weird. in New York move out of the inner city to get to the away nice the neighborhood graffiti. to get away from the graffiti. And there's uh, Jim Carrey talking out of his ass and uh, spray painting on his own house. It's weird, though. Ten years ago, people would have been like, oh, he rocks. Ace Ventura wrote on his house. Yeah. But now, like a few movies that don't work out, people are just like, it's fucking nut bars writing on his house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Potter's painting. Yeah. <laughs> Reese Witherspoon was hit by a car this week. What the... Oh, how oh, dare come you? On, stop it. That Nobody is wants that. Mean. What uh, funny, but mean. Yeah, yeah. When did this happen? Wednesday. How? Do you have an alibi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was busy. I was doing something else. She was jogging. See? Exercise will fucking kill you, people. I've been saying that for years. You had a good reason to stay home. She was jogging in Santa Monica on Wednesday morning, and an 84-year-old woman went through a uh, intersection and clipped her in the crosswalk. Oh. It's okay, she was only going 20 miles an hour. That's not a joke. She was going 20 miles an hour. Was she really? Hit Reese Witherspoon, who they say just suffered minor injuries, was transported to a local hospital, and she was released that day. She's fine because the car hit her in the chin. <laughs> Absorbed all the impact. Does she have a big chin? She's got a big chin. Does she really? Yeah, huge, huge, big lantern jaw of a chin. <laughs> yeah. Like the Jay Leno of chins? She's the Jay Leno of women, is what she is. <laughs> Uh, apparently, the woman was cited for failing to yield a pedestrian in a crosswalk and for not finishing the job. Apparently, police, <laughs> police were upset with her for not taking out Greasy Reesey, as yeah, my friend greasy calls her. Reesey, man. Yeah. Sorry, ladies, but Neil Diamond's off the market. I know. He's gone, I said. The 70-year-old icon is engaged to his co-manager, Katie McNeil. That means she'll be Katie McNeil Diamond when she marries him. 
You figure that out? I did. Well done. This is his third wife. He's 70 years old, as I mentioned. Sweet Viagra. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Those diamonds, they work so good. Uh, he was married when he, in, uh, to his high school sweetheart in 63 and then married to another woman for 26 years before they divorced, and now he's moving on to his third. So uh, Katie McNeil, man, the song she's going to be hearing is, is like, I'm coming in America today, right now, on your boobs. Okay. <laughs> Charlie Sheen's roast is going to be taped on Monday night. It will be aired, of course, on the 19th, uh, the same night that Two and a Half Men is going to be airing. This didn't happen yet? No, they're still they're like filming this it. happened already. Filming it on Monday night. They just added some additional names to the dais who will be making fun of Charlie. William Shatner will be uh, cracking wise at Charlie's expense. Give us a taste of what that might sound like. You do so much crack. <laughs> and you fuck porn stars. I'm jealous. <laughs> Hilarious private practice star Kate Walsh will be up there. What the fuck? I saw her on The Tonight Show once. She wasn't very funny. No, I don't understand why she's there. Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash will be uh, giving us his comedy stylings. Mike Tyson will be up there, so... We got that. You're so, you're so ridiculous with all your craziness and I can't believe it all the, even all the money you had you quit that job that you had on television good night everybody <laughs> <laughs> throw a, keep a couple jabs before he leaves but the reason I really brought this up is because the, the podfather himself is going to be there John Lovitz will be on the day, day as well yes bitch Love it. Star of Saturday Night Live and, uh, and uh, this joint. The John Lovitz Podcast Theater. That's right. Sex. It's not here tonight, is he? John, are you in the crowd? No. <laughs> I'm home counting the money. <laughs> Do you think he'll go, you should write him some jokes, dude. Some Charlie jokes. Uh, Give him uh, some of your Charlie I'm jokes. I'm not taking responsibility for whatever happens up there. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be I'd weird. I'd rather watch as an innocent bystander. And they're, they're, air, they're I'm, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you almost hurt yourself. I, I stopped you. Oh, they're airing oh, that. I got a cramp. I remember. It lit. <laughs> and you just held it. You got blue balls. Um, <laughs> to, uh, they're going to air that the same night as they debut as two and a half the men. new Two and a Half Men. Yeah. Are, are you going to watch either? I will watch the Two and a Half Men. But you won't just watch out of somebody. curiosity. I've never watched a regular episode of Two and a Half yeah, Men, yeah, yeah. but I will watch the new one just to see what's what. With I, that they might thing. get. I've never seen my same like you. I've never seen the other show, but now I might tune in to see. I just want to hear what they say. They said he what? He gets uh, what? hit by a train or something. Apparently, yeah. yeah. In a meat explosion is how they phrase it. <laughs> the train hits him so hard he, he explodes into meat. How many years was he doing that show? Uh, f four or five. All right, so four or five years. Okay, so well, the show's in syndication, yeah. So yeah. Plenty, plenty time. But figure twenty years from now, kids seeing that show. You know how people watch it, like I Love Lucy now, or the Brady Bunch or something. Totally, like they don't know the history, they don't fucking know the backstory at all. You're watching that show, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> the main character, like they're like, oh, he got hit by a train. Anyway, look at this guy. <laughs> it's just gonna play so fucking strange. It will be odd. Yeah. 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 This guy's got a lot of Twitter followers, though. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan! Yeah! It's in the news this week. James, if you would. Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? <laughs> why, indeed. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan has to appear in front of the judge on October the 19th and explain why she has only done 45 hours of the... 480 hours of community service that she has to do. 10% almost. <laughs> Not even, though. Uh, she's been out of jail for some time now, and uh, they would like her to complete that obligation to the court, I think. I've seen a few stories about her having enough time to party all the time, party all the time. She's been with Paris Hilton, hanging out with her. She went to Kim Kardashian's wedding. Mm -hmm. She uh, filmed a commercial at her house while she was in jail. Going to fucking Kardashian's wedding should be community <laughs> service. They should take it at least an hour off of her time for that. 
She has only completed 45 hours of service. She has 360 hours of service at the Women's Center to do, Los Angeles Women's Center, which is for uh, homeless and abused women. And she has to complete 120 hours of community service at the LA County Morgue. <laughs> she'll be there soon enough, so don't worry about it. She'll, she'll get her time in there, I'm sure. I believe, aren't they also making her spend the night in a haunted fucking house as well? <laughs> I think so. If she wants to get her uncle's money, she has to survive <laughs> one night in the haunted house. Wesley Snipes, while we're talking about celebrity criminals, he's still behind bars. He is serving a three-year sentence in federal prison. They started last December for tax evasion. He's in jail? Oh, yeah. He's, he's in the big house. He's in the Gray Bar Hotel. He's in the Who's Gal. I guess you shouldn't always bet on black, apparently. Yeah. I like that movie a lot, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, he has tried to get a new trial with the U.S. Supreme Court and the 11th Circus Court of Appeals, and they both said, uh, no, sir, no. They're just leaving him sit in jail for tax evasion. For three years, so apparently he can't get a new deal, and it looks like he's going to do his whole sentence. Lindsay Lohan, who broke real laws. Yeah, she stole something. She was at her house partying on the roof. Wesley Snipes forgot to write a check. That's all. Three years in the, in the federal pen. Uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I guess they're really sending a message. Like by taking a high profile person, being like, look, we'll even pr prosecute high profile right. people. So for pay your taxes, money. people. Yeah, yeah. Or just hide it in an offshore account. <laughs> uh, more criminal crimes from celebrities. Criminal crimes? That makes sense, right? <laughs> even worse is I'm not even paying attention. I'm like, yeah, nope, that went right past you. <laughs> Let's talk criminal crimes, Ralph. <laughs> Times are tough everywhere, especially when you're a has-been celebrity. I think it's really uh, more difficult. Uh, Gumby was uh, <laughs> Gumby was found guilty of a crime this week. He tried to rob a convenience store in San Diego this week. <laughs> Gumby walked into the uh, into the 7-Eleven, uh, slapped his hands on the counter, demanded the money in the register, and some cigarettes from the guy behind the counter. <laughs> Without a weapon or anything. Well. The guy refused, thinking it was a joke, naturally, as you would when Gumby comes into your store. He said, I'm going to get my gun, and Gumby uh, tried to find his gun in his pants. <laughs> Apparently, the costume was too bulky. Uh, spilled his, uh, his own change out on the floor. Got nervous and ran out of the store, leaving 27 cents behind. He actually made a donation. <laughs> more than a crime. I brought in the actual video from the surveillance camera. This is, uh, this is a little green slab of clay coming into the, <laughs> oh coming into the store. Uh, he goes up to the counter. I'm serious. I'm going to slap my hands. I'm very angry. I'm angry, Gumby. All right, fine. I'm going to get my gun out. I'm going to get my... Oh, I'm slipping. I'm falling. I got change coming out. All right, I'm just going to fucking get out of here. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> Gumby left with uh, nothing. He got zero <laughs> zilch. He had a uh, he had Pokey waiting outside for him uh, to give him a uh, a getaway. But uh, the that cops. Is, why why that outfit, man? I mean, I understand. Like, why not just cut the head off and wear that? Like, why would you wear the entire the suit? suit? <laughs> just like tie the tie the outfit around your face <laughs> as a mask, rather than fucking go in like give me the money. I'm guessing a uh, discount rack, clearance sale. That's what I'm <laughs> guessing. It was the cheapest costume he could find at the store. Uh, I feel bad for Gumby because the guy behind the counter didn't know who Gumby was. <laughs> <laughs> and the cops showed up and he described the perpetrator, I shit you not, as a green SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> oh, poor Gumby. No wonder, no wonder he's resorting to a life of crime. No one even fucking remembers who Gumby is anymore. Somewhere Pokey is just rolling a tear, man. Just, they don't remember us, Gumby. The blockheads are laughing. <laughs> we won, bitch. <laughs> the cops say this is no joke. They take this very seriously. They are currently, and I shit you not, canvassing the neighborhood looking for anyone who may recognize the perpetrator. <laughs> I recognize the perpetrator. I did too. <laughs> I watched him when I was a kid on the weekends. I was thinking, what are they going to do? Send this poster around the neighborhood? Is this the, the picture? Wanted. <laughs> I know that dude. He was once a little green slab of clay. Gumby? But you should see what that motherfucker can do today. Gumby? He can walk into any book with his pony pal Pokey too. If you need a friend, then, then Gumby's, Gumby's a part, part of you. you. 
Jessica what did Park- that mean? Gumby's a part of you. I think the uh, lyric is, if you've got a heart, then Gumby's a part of you. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he was a big-hearted piece of clay. Yeah. And you had that in common. If you were a good person, then you and Gumby had something in common. Of course, Gumby could blow himself <laughs> because he was very flexible, so he didn't have that in common. Right. <laughs> but Kevin tried. He Technically, has tried. Yeah, yeah. I could do it. I did it. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Without help. See, so Gumby is a part of you, in essence. It is, actually. Yeah, you're right. That song makes a lot of sense. Uh, his pony pal Pokey, of course, was a horse, an yes. orange horse. Remember him? And while we're talking about horses, Sarah Jessica Parker was in the news. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's here tonight. I can't be too mean to Sarah Jessica Parker. She likes her. Oh, she loves Sarah Jessica Parker. I'm a big Parker. fan of Sex in the City, man. Yeah. The TV show, not the two movies. We've talked about it. Right. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker did an interview with ABC News this week saying that she has to leave America periodically because she finds the lack of civility in contemporary American society positively painful, in her words. Hmm. She says, some people simply delight in tearing other people down. I believe old horse face is right when she says this, <laughs> and I back her 100%. That's why I say give her a sugar cube and give her a brand new paddle or saddle. She hasn't had to deal with the real world in a long time. No, man. she hasn't. Even she lives in, in a very York. rarefied atmosphere. Incredibly rarefied air. Even in fucking New York, she's still not dealing with most of the shit that most people do. Like, when was the last time she was in uh, the equivalent of a Ralph's? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and somebody, like, fighting with somebody over the last box of peanut butter Captain Crunch. Yeah. The vintage box. Because you're like, no, it's also a collector's <laughs> item. as well. Yeah. This sounds like a personal painful experience from your own history. I was just making it up. But <laughs> no, you know she, sends, she sends Broderick out for the groceries, right? Yeah, really? Yeah. Go, well, stage actor, go shop. <laughs> stage actor. He's like, you're still here? <laughs> See, Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. No one else did. No one else nope. did. Don't offer him. In a world He's a where big boy. He can handle it. I can take it. Yeah. In a world where nobody recognizes Gumby, uh, I can't be surprised <laughs> that nobody catches a Ferris We're Bueller. We're showing thing. our age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evan Rachel Wood is in the news this week. She celebrated her birthday by going to Paris, France to party at the nightclubs there in the City of Lights. That's quite a life, isn't it? Yeah, man. She was out there on the dance floor and one of her friends turned around and elbowed her in the face. <laughs> Suck on that, Evan Rachel Wood. Ugh. She turned 24 this week with one less tooth. On her fucking birthday? Bam. Ugh. Like a hockey fight. Just yeah, knocked that really. tooth right out of her head. Took an elbow and shit, like Gordy Howe. Evan Rachel Wood said, it was still less painful than dating Marilyn Manson. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't know the Marilyn Manson fan club was in the crowd tonight. Sorry. <laughs> Jessica Simpson, this week, reportedly was going to get breast reduction so she could look better in her wedding gown. Who's she marrying? Um, a, a former football player, NFL were kinda, guy. Were, were people What's just that? yelling... A dumbass. a dumbass, yes, sir. A dumbass. But were I can't people remember just his name, going but... boobs? No, or I think they're going boo, boo. Because why? She's she is she is not well liked. One more time. Bzz. 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 Okay. Bzz. Uh, Jessica was going to get the breast reduction, as I mentioned, to look better in her wedding gown. Until friends pointed out, if she got a breast reduction, she wouldn't never need to wear a wedding gown because that's what she's got to offer her fiance. She tweeted, I love my boobies. They're not going anywhere. And America exhaled. <laughs> this is a great what story. What a non-news story. I thought about getting a breast reduction, but now I'm not. Well, we were all worried she was going to get it, but it uh, turns out we can all relax. Now Remain they, calm. All is well. It looks like the fucking Dukes of Hazard sequel can happen. That's right. <laughs> you guys remember Saturday Night Live when it was funny? <laughs> years ago. Years ago. But there was a sketch on that show with Alec Baldwin, who I think is the, uh, still the record holder for most guest host appearances on okay. that show. He did it with Molly Shannon and uh, Anna Gasteyer. It was when they did that NPR bit where they did the, uh, the radio show. Good times. Uh, good times. And he played a uh, chef named Pete Schwetty. And he came on for the holiday season to show you his Schwetty balls. And they were like popcorn balls and rum balls. And he had these delicious balls for you yeah. to eat. For those of you who don't remember, here's a little, little piece of the sketch from Saturday Night Live. This is uh, the Schwetty balls. Can I touch your balls? <laughs> 
Go ahead, but be careful. They're very delicate. <laughs> wow. I can't wait to get my mouth around this ball. <laughs> Ooh, I like the way your balls smell. <laughs> Do whatever you want to them, ladies. My balls are here for your pleasure. <laughs> well, Ben and Jerry's this week announced their official Shweddy Balls ice cream. It's their new flavor, which combines malted milk balls, fudge-covered rum balls, and vanilla ice cream flavored with a hint of rum as a dedication to their favorite sketch from Saturday Night Live, the Shweddy Balls. Hey, man, that's cute. A little late, but cute. Do you want to be eating a bowl full of sweaty balls at home <laughs> while you're watching television? Uh, this is going to be the worst selling flavor of Ben and Jerry's ever. No. Yes. I, no, every kid. Since yeasty vagina. That did not sell well either. That was, that was a flavor that did not, did not fly off the shelves. This is a Bart Simpson ice cream. Every kid is going to go to their mom like, I want sweaty balls. You're going to be like, why you? And he's like, it's an ice cream. <laughs> you should direct the commercial. I just did. Yeah. So uh, look for sweaty balls uh, in a grocery store near you. I'm so eating that. Why are you so eager to eat sweaty balls? <laughs> that sounds good, man. It's good flavor. A little hint of rum. That sounds all right. Tito Jackson is going on tour to pay tribute to his late brother. That's Michael, in case anybody didn't know. He is putting a show together called A Jackson Named Michael. <laughs> Remembering a legend. As opposed to the, uh, the family, the half of the family that's doing the tribute show in Cardiff, Wales, this will be a touring show. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, Tito Jackson, Reby Jackson, Michael's sister. sister. Yeah, there's a Reby, believe it or not. Mm. And Denise Williams, who is not a Jackson, <laughs> but she was on the Footloose soundtrack. I remember that. Let's so. hear for the boy. Oh, that's Niecy Williams, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, were, uh, they will sing Michael's songs and then tell stories about him. It's singing and spoken word. I'm selling tickets if anybody wants any. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Kicks off in the UK in March in 2012. I don't know why we put all our shit over there in the UK. They don't deserve it. Toddlers and Tierras. Toddlers and Tierras. This show's on TLC. Getting a lot of heat this week. Mm. Uh, not for the recent episode that showed a four-year-old girl with fake tits in a Dolly Parton costume up on stage for one of these little girl pageants. Are you familiar with the Toddlers and Tara yes. show? Yes. This is when mothers uh, abuse their young daughters by dressing them up like clowns and then parading them in front of other equally abusive mothers. I remember the clip of the little girl going, I want the crown. <laughs> yes. Um, that didn't upset people nearly as much as the mother who dressed her daughter up in this outfit. This is the uh, pretty woman outfit. For those of you who saw the movie Pretty Woman, you may remember, this is the costume Julia Roberts' character wore when she was a fucking whore. That's what she's wearing when she gets picked up by, by the, the very Richard first Gere. scene. Richard yeah, Gere shows yeah. up in the sports car and he pulls over and says, oh, there's a whore. Yeah. This is a three-year-old girl named Paisley. Paisley's mother's defending the decision, saying she would never have put that costume on a 10-year-old, but on a 3-year-old, it's funny. First All right, here's off, the thing. Here's I mean, I don't even know if I would have recognized her if somebody hadn't said, hey, that's Pretty Woman. Well, that's how they introduce her in the pageant. They go like, like and, now. and now here's Pretty Woman from Pretty Woman, Paisley. And she, she goes out to the song, da -na 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 -na, the Pretty Woman song, and she shakes her ass. I'm a hooker, <laughs> yes. and I'm only three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hooker, everyone look at me. <laughs> I'm a hooker. All right, just wait for you to finish. Um, here's the thing about these pageants. Let's just cut to the chase and put poles on the stage for the girls, shall we? Because that's where they're ending up after all. Anyway, it's so just, weird. It's not treating your child like a prop is kind of that, that crosses it's the abuse. line. It's abuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, yeah. I mean, but you know, uh, no, there's no good upside to that except for those of us watching the show. <laughs> That's right. All that being said, she is fucking hot in that outfit. <laughs> Come on, let's face it. I mean, she's got a hell of a body for a three-year-old. You know what I'm saying? Are you with me, Kev? Huh? Not at all. 
You're creeping me out. <laughs> Wilson Phillips is getting back together again. Hey, sit down, sit down. I knew people were going to go crazy. They are uh, not only recording a new album, but they've got a new reality TV show called The Wilson Phillips Project. It's going to document their fight back into the top of the music industry. It's going to be on television for a long, long time. <laughs> Carney Wilson, Wendy Wilson, and China Phillips are gonna be there on the show. Uh, it's gonna air on the TV Guide Network. <laughs> yes, it's not just for seeing what's on television anymore. Is uh, this really? It's gonna they, happen. They air programs on that? Oh yeah, they've got their own original programming. TV Guide Network has promised them one full season or until Carney eats the other two, whatever comes <laughs> first, so. We'll have to wait and see. Reality television news, the Kardashians in the news again. This is an interesting story. I don't know if you heard or not, but they have their own uh, clothing line in Sears. <laughs> Only the best for the Kardashians. <laughs> Next to the washer and dryer and the Craftsman uh, <laughs> chainsaw, you can get the Kardashian collection with a K. Tough uh, skins by Kardashian. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Annie Leibovitz, the legendary photographer, did all his Rolling Stone covers for mm -hmm. many years. She was the one shooting them for the advertising campaign. People couldn't help but notice there was something up with the photos when they took a look at them. Let's take a look at one of the, uh, one of the pictures for the advertising campaign, the first one. There's the three uh, Kardashian girls together. People said, wait a minute, isn't Chloe like a giant, hulking behemoth of a woman and the other two are 5'2"? They're photoshopping Chloe to make her look more, si more the size of Kim and Courtney. What, they're shrinking? Like they're inches shrinking off her. her, yeah, inches, pounds, wow. uh, penis. They took it all off her. <laughs> Testicles, they've just, they've changed her appearance completely. Look at this other picture. This is them in, in, their, in their underwear, in their, uh, there we go. That, she's not even that, she's not even near those other girls when they shot that picture. They just shot her in afterwards. Here's the real Kardashians. Let me show you, see what they actually look. <laughs> Eat Kim. Eat Courtney. <laughs> She's the Chewbacca of the Kardashian family. She's hunched down. They're on boxes. She later ate that award. <laughs> geek news every week. We talk about geek news, one of our favorite segments. Woo! We got a shitload of geek news to talk about this week, so let's hit it, James. Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kev. Geek news. The big geek news this week. Shoes. You're right, sir. Absolutely. Back Seen to them. the Future 2 shoes. For those of you who know Back to the Future 2, uh, Michael J. Fox goes into the future. It's 2015, I think he goes to. Yes. And he puts on uh, these brand new Nike shoes they've got in the future that are self-lacing. Yep. The Nike mags, they're called. He goes, cool, self-lacing, really cool. Self yeah. Power, Power lays, there it is. There, well there done, we go. Man. Yeah. Here's the shot of, there's him uh, sniffing the shoe or something. I don't know what's going on there. But uh, Nike has finally made the real deal. They're making actual replicas of this shoe. 1,500 of these are available starting yesterday. You gotta go on eBay and bid on them. You can't buy them. The first pair went for $37,500. 37? Hey. Um, there's a new auction every day up until September the 18th. Here's the actual shoes you'll be bidding on. These are the real deals there, sitting on top of the DeLorean. I saw a They're pretty commercial cool. they did with uh, what's-his-face is in it, Christopher Lloyd, yeah. Bill Hader's in it. But they, there's a cute little moment where somebody goes, are they self-lacing or whatever? And they cut to two guys who are like, not till 2015. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I thought that was neat. But that may, gives me hope. I think maybe in three years or four years they'll release the Maglock version. I, I was think. looking at the uh, prices, and they all... The, the, Base, the base bid seems to be around six, seven thousand dollars for these shoes. I mean, I, I like. Did you see the? You didn't mention the case. I haven't seen the case. Oh, really? Yeah. It comes in a plutonium case. Oh, that's kind of cool. Like that he has in the beginning, Back to the Future. Right. I, I, right. First, when I heard that, I was like, Oh my God, that's worth it. And then I was like, I have lost perspective <laughs> yes. on money. 
yeah. <laughs> a fucking yeah. metal box and sneakers. I'm like, 37K? Of course. My wife's here. I like to tell her I'm going to buy a $8,000 pair of sneakers. That yeah. would be very entertaining. But that, I think it's neat that they made it, but uh, hopefully they'll mainstream it. And but here's it the everything. thing. that All of the proceeds go to the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Awesome. So very sweet. It is a, uh, a worthy cause, so you can't really bitch about them getting a lot of money for these things. And they light up. They don't actually lock, but they do light they up. They do light up, yeah. yeah. There's a battery in them, and it's good for a few hours. You charge it, recharge it. <laughs> Sounds a little shaky to me, but what do I know? I'll just... Oh, you all were thinking it. You all were thinking it. Oh. I have to go back and take back that joke. <laughs> Gillian Anderson confirms there will be a third X-Files movie. America said, there were two X-Files movies? <laughs> <laughs> the second one was really tough. Did you see it? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of that show, but the second, the second flick, I mean, the first flick was a little tough. but It, it was, was in the middle of, of the, the show, show so which was is happening. rare. Yeah. But the other movie was just really far from the market. Yeah, I don't know if there's a big demand, I think, for another X-Files movie. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, sadly, I don't know. I mean, look, don't do it as a feature. Do it as, like, you know, TV, TV movie. movie. Then yeah. everyone will fucking tune in. That, seemed, that would be the Do it as a movie. podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fucking, oh, my just God. Just sit up here what and talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> this was a sad, sad story. A mentally disabled man was robbed of his Superman collection. This, this, this made me feel bad. That's not funny, sir. Oh, oh, oh. He's You're a 48-year-old mentally deficient man who's got a Superman collection. It was stolen from him. His name is Mike Meyer, and uh, not the love guru, <laughs> Mike Meyer. He's 48 years old. He received Social Security for his mental disability. He supplements his income with part-time work at McDonald's. <laughs> oh. I tried to do it straight, but it's true. He works at McDonald's. <laughs> On what day? And you think my Superman toys? <laughs> <laughs> it's a sad story. <laughs> Here's Mike now. We have a picture of Mike up here sitting on his Superman sheets. Oh, come on. How does that not break your heart? You and I are one synapse away from being that guy. <laughs> Dude, I gotta tell you, I'm one shave away from being that guy. <laughs> Looked up at that picture and I was like, that's hauntingly familiar. <laughs> Fat guy in a room with Superman <laughs> paraphernalia? It looks like me at home. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, apparently, Mike used to work at Hardee's and he oh, knew a guy. <laughs> this story just gets worse and worse. He knew a guy there named Gary. He didn't know his last name, but they used to work together. He ran into Gary at a comic book store. Okay. And Gary asked if he could come over and take a look at his collection. Okay. Gary saw the collection, came back the next night with his girlfriend, and the girlfriend said, hey, Mike, why don't you and I sit and watch some Superman movies? So the girl sits down with Mike. Gary goes into the back room and cleans him out of all the Superman stuff. Oh, that's so shitty. Yeah. Took uh, just, it's, it's worth about $5,000, the collection. Took about 1,800 Superman comic books. He had them from like 74 up to present day. Uh, collectibles, action figures, a uh, lunchbox, a radio, a television. Took a bunch of stuff. So uh, folks in Iowa are asking, St. Louis area rather, asking if you see anybody selling Superman stuff to. Uh, yeah, just don't buy it or turn those fuckers in. Yeah, but that's, that, was, that was set. It's Human like, pieces of shit, Ralph. Like Lex Luthor to this kid's Superman. That's right, yeah. So Jerks. I feel bad now about all that McDonald's stuff I did earlier. <laughs> Star Wars, the complete saga is coming out on Blu-ray. Uh, what's it, a couple weeks now? Can't wait. Yeah. No! To, uh... <laughs> no! <laughs> no. No. The first one is... No! This one is so calm. No. <laughs> Don't kill my son. <laughs> uh, to cash in on that, Vivid Pictures, uh, the porn company, is putting out Star Wars Triple X, a porn parody. Not Star Wars, but a, a reasonable uh, replica. Star Wars. No. <laughs> <laughs> If 
by all accounts, it's, uh, it's pretty well made. It's got legendary porn star Tom Byron as Obi-Wan Kenobi. What more could you ask for? In this film, apparently all the stormtroopers are really stacked babes, so all of the, uh, the stormtrooper outfits are molded with big tits in them. Oh, I've seen, like, girl stormtroopers at Comic-Con. Yeah, it's, very it's cute. like that. I brought you a little footage. Just This is, uh, this is safe for work, yet, so yes. Ross won't be embarrassed with his aunt or anything, but <laughs> this is a little scene from uh, Star Wars Triple X, the porn parody. How did my father die? A young Jedi named Darth Vader, who was a pupil of mine until I cut his arms and legs off and left him burning in a river of lava. I, I think I want to go home now. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to save you. I'm being rescued by a transvestite. Being rescued by a transvestite because you got boobs. So, and then they have sex? No. I, I don't know if the brother and sister have sex. That'd be creepy. That'd be weird, right? I think Han Solo and her have sex. but uh, I would actually watch that, man. It seems like it'd be a fun, funny, dirty time. <laughs> Glad you think that way. Yeah. Uh, porn parodies are all the rage now. Now we're going to the next level. Someone has made a parody of a porn parody trailer. If that makes any sense. There is no porn parody for The Dark Knight Rises as of yet. But given a title like that, you know someone's going to get around to it. Yeah. So someone on YouTube posted a parody of what they think the porn parody trailer is going to look like. <laughs> so it's a parody of the characters that they think would be in the porn version, and they're making all kinds of nasty, slutty remarks to each other. Like Batman is Buttman, and Catwoman is Scatwoman, and Commissioner Hardon instead of Commissioner Gordon, and Poison HIV. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't write it. I'm just bringing it in. Okay. Here's a little sequence of the parody of the yet-to-be-made porn parody of the trailer for The Dark Knight Rises. Hang on, Ralph. It's loading. Oh, it's loading. That's what she said. <laughs> we need a screen over in front of us. We can just... So we can stop ahead. doing this? Yeah. That's yeah. the worst part. What the hell are you doing here? I'm here to make sure your Dark Knight rises. It's been a long time since I've gotten any tail. I just want to give it to the butt man. Oh, come on, poker. Don't you want to ride your Harley? Vroom, vroom. I'm going to punish the people of Gotham. Why don't you start with me, right meow? Do you do banal? You do banal, he asks her. Banal. Banal. That's, cute. That's awesome. Yeah. This is my favorite story of the week by far. You people are lucky because we're running short of time. I only have five clips to play for you. I wanted just to sit here and play the entire album. William Shatner's got a new album coming out. You may have heard his legendary version of Rocket Man. You ever heard that version that he did? Did you bring a taste or no? I, I didn't, but uh, he's got a new album called Seeking Major Tom, which is cover versions of all songs that have anything to do with space. Okay. Now, he had an album out not too long ago called Has Been. It was actually was pretty criti critically acclaimed, but this, this stuff is fucking magical. <laughs> I brought you in a bunch of clips because I just couldn't decide which ones to play for you. Here is uh, William Shatner doing his take on David Bowie's Space Oddity. This is Major Tom from Ground Control. I'm stepping through the door. <laughs> and I'm floating in a most peculiar way. And the stars look very different today. Oh, come on. To make you a little hard. Does he not want to sing at all? Like... No. Well, he does a little bit. Here's another clip. Uh, remember Spirit in the Sky? Going yeah. up to the spirit in the sky because yeah. it's in the sky. See, it's a theme, part of the theme of the that album. That counts. Yeah, here we okay. go. Going up to the spirit in the sky. That's where I'm going to go when I die. When I die and they lay me to rest, going to go to the place that's the best. Yeah, that's Phil. He doesn't make it sound like the best place. <laughs> How about she blinded me with science? I Remember must that hear song? It. Yes. She blinded me with science. <laughs> with science. Blinded me with science. 
and failed me in geometry. Oh, he's the best. That's good. I actually remember like Steve Miller's Space Cowboy. Yeah, some people call me Space Cowboy. Yeah, here it is. I'm a space cowboy. <laughs> Bet you weren't ready for that. I'm a space cowboy. I'm sure you know where it's at. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I saved the best for last. This is a double disc set, by the way, this album. <laughs> it's like 30 tracks on this. It sounds like he recorded it in an hour. <laughs> he just read lyrics out loud. He breaks with the theme at one point and gives us his version of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> I predict... Those of you who are single will be dancing to this as your first dance at your weddings when you hear this version. <laughs> this is William Shatner's Bohemian Rhapsody. Mama, just kill a man, put a gun against his head, pulled my trigger, now he's dead. Mama, life had just begun. But now I've gone and thrown it all away. Oh, God damn it. I mean, I, I, I've been laughing all day at this. <laughs> I'm still laughing. If that counts, I think I could pull off an album. Absolutely you could. <laughs> I keep telling you, we need to do a musical version of Babylon at some point. We need to put totally. some numbers together. Liam <laughs> Neeson's car. <laughs> I don't want to choke. <laughs> it is the end of Hollywood Babylon. Thanks so much for coming out tonight, everybody. Big ups to you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Garmy represent on this Friday Babylon. But before we go, we do have to ask that musical question we ask at the show every week. Just how big is Liam Neeson's cock? Oh, we can't help but wonder how big is Liam Neeson's cock? How big is Liam Neeson's cock? <laughs> You're singing more than he just was. <laughs> Mama! <laughs> I just Did you hear him pull the trigger? Now he's dead. <laughs> Mama! <laughs> I don't want to die. How big is Lee Neeson's cock? That's what we ask every week. John McGuire in Glasgow, Scotland started this all off and we appreciate it. Here is the first of many Liam Neeson cock facts. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It will be partnered with Chaz Bono on this season's Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's so big there are three dwarves operating it from inside. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Sometimes he and Tom Hanks jump on it to play chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? A census taker once tried to interview it and it ate his liver with some <laughs> fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That it just got hired to narrate the Morgan Freeman story. That's clever. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's the reason Morrissey is so depressed. <laughs> I knew there had to be a reason. Liam Neeson's <laughs> cock is so big. How big is it? Jennifer Connelly had to find her way through it to rescue her brother from Jareth the Goblin <laughs> King. <laughs> it's the hardcore geeks who are laughing at that one. Turn back, Sarah. <laughs> it's a giant cock. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? His urethra has a pit crew. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That when it looks into the abyss, the abyss looks away. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It knows what the lyrics to Bohemian Rhapsody mean. <laughs> I've always wondered that. I had no idea. Scaramouche, Let's Scaramouche. Let's not, we will not let you go. Let it go. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That when he has sex with a black woman, it's technically a hate crime. <laughs> Just technically, not by intent. 
Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It put a bounty on Boba Fett. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That when he gets a boner in public, it looks like he's performing a caber toss. Your Scottish listeners will love this, the guy wrote. What that is. People in Scotland are laughing. I right know, man. I think the caber is like a big telephone kind of thing that they throw, right? Yeah. It's going to be huge in Scotland, <laughs> trust me. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That the international sign for choking is also the same international sign for Liam Neeson getting a blowjob. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? He once passed a kidney stone at a bowling alley and got a strike. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. <laughs> How big is it? Phil Collins felt it coming in the air tonight. <laughs> Sadly, we have more. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Liam Neeson's <laughs> cock is so big. How big is it? Acapulco cliff divers leap off it for practice. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Once a year, the EPA releases a report detailing the impact its admissions have on the environment. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It walks downstairs, alone or in pairs, and makes a slinkity sound. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Women need three tanks of gas just to ask him, was it good for you too? It's a long That's drive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It calls dibs on the top bunk. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It holds the only win over Parker Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a minute. <laughs> oh my God. There's like fucking one person in the world <laughs> laughing at that. And it's the guy who played Parker That's Lewis. Right. <laughs> Corey Nemec. Is that it? Yeah, Corey Nemec, yeah. 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 Oh, fucking remembered. What, did you watch that show going, I wish it was me? <laughs> Ralph Garman can't, can't lose. I wish I can't lose. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Bruce Willis will actually take direction from it. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When Liam Neeson hears Kevin and Ralph's shout-out theme, by the time he gets his cock out, the show is over. <laughs> that is Hollywood Babylon for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck on. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Give it up one more time for Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman, Hollywood Babylon, live at the John Lovitz Podcast Theater.